Okay, um, I have spoken with the owner of the uh, 1963 <coughs> Chevrolet Biscayne uh, about his differential uh, case lateral runout problem. Um, if you recall, we had seven thousandths of an inch lateral runout, which was way too much. And in speaking with some of my colleagues here uh, at the university, um, we decided that we would like to try um, cleaning up or truing up that lateral runout uh, here on our um, Procut, or I'm sorry, Accuturn uh, brake lathe. Uh, the Procut is an on car one, but this is our Accuturn uh, bench lathe. And as you can see, I've got the differential, <laughs> but this is something you haven't seen uh, before. I've got the differential mounted up uh, on the arbor uh, shaft. Our arbor shaft has about one thousandth of an inch uh, runout, which is the maximum allowed for uh, arbor shaft runout on a brake lathe. And so, of course, that's going to, no matter how straight and true this appears to be, it's going to still have a thousandth of an inch uh, runout. But the trick is trying to get the differential case perfectly centered using uh, bearing cones um, for disc brake rotors. And I've played with it a few times um, in different re uh, relationships with the case to the cones and the lowest amount of runout I can come up with on the dial indicator here is, is six thousandths of an inch. So I'm sorry, the highest amount was six thousandths of an inch. So that's that's the one I'm looking for. Um, and we're going to I've got it at that point right now. So we're going to try to clean this up uh, with the um, disc brake rotor uh, bit, uh, one of the bits, and treat this like a rotor uh, finish, a rotor surface, and see if we can uh, take out some of that um, lateral uh, runout. Uh, let me get the camera positioned to where you can see uh, the before runout, and then we'll do an after uh, machining run out check. Okay, I'm going to uh, turn on the brake lathe and we'll take a look at the uh, run out that we're measuring here with the dial indicator. So, as you can see, we've got some movement there, and let me zoom in. You can see what we've got. Get it focused. Yeah, right there. Okay. Uh, notice we're going a, maybe two thousandths uh, below the zero, and it, it goes up and touches maybe just slightly, uh, maybe goes over that five. So there's there's six to seven thousandths of an inch run out which one thousandth of an inch of that run out could be from the arbor shaft or the brake lathe itself but like i say we're going to um, put the bit one of the bits for cutting a disc brake rotor right on that surface the lateral surface there where the roller tip is and try to clean this up okay i've got the brake lathe all set up here to machine this the lateral surface of the differential case and uh, I've got it started. I could not get the bit all the way in to that uh, surface where we measured the radial run out but I've got it really really close but it uh, is taking its first pass here hopefully it's only pass um, I'm just taking off a few thousandths of an inch of material and so far it appears to have a nice clean um, cut but it'll be a little more revealing as we get to the outer edge because that's where I believe most of the runout is is on the uh, towards the outside of that flange so let's continue watching this looks like we're about a third the way through
It's not making any unusual noises, no screeching like some uh, brake rotors do, but we've got enough mass here that it, hopefully it won't do that. It's looking good and sounding good so far. It's like we're a little more than halfway through. Got some people working in the background here, so I apologize for the extra noise. Looks like we're almost out to that ridge where the rust buildup was uh, from the spacer plate on the 456 gears that we had on there. I'd cleaned that up uh, with a sh knife sharpening stone so that wasn't affecting the uh, lateral run out. Looks like we're about three quarters of the way through. Hopefully we'll be successful here. Uh, if we're not, then we're going to have to find a different differential case. Uh, the owner of the vehicle uh, I spoke with last night, and he said that he thinks he can round up another one, uh, but hopefully we won't have to. He also told me that he looked up the part number of that uh, differential housing, and it was for an open style differential. And to fit this pause attraction differential case in an open style differential housing they had to grind out all that material that I discovered when we first uh, disassembled the housing. Okay it looks like it's done. Let's zoom in here. We're all the way out and uh, let's see if we need to do another cut or if that was good enough. Looks like there's a, just a tiny bit on that outer edge that it did not uh, clean up. Um, let me back it off here just a little bit. We're really close. But I think I'm going to run one more pass on that, and then we'll take it back over to the differential housing and uh, check its run out. Oh, we'll check its run out here too. But let me do one more pass. Uh, I won't make you watch that one. Okay, I've run the second pass here on the brake lathe for this uh, differential case, and that cleaned it up uh, really well. Um, I've just mounted the uh, dial indicator uh, back up to uh, check for run out and of course it's going to measure uh, or it should measure zero right now but then we're going to loosen this nut and hold the cones that center it and turn the differential case half a turn and then re-measure the run out and that'll give us uh, the true uh, run out that we've machined in based on the centering cones but that's not necessarily based on the uh, side bearings. So we're, the, the end goal here is to have uh, the run out when centered by the side bearings in the differential housing be less than three thousandths of an inch. So uh, let me reposition the camera so we can watch the dial indicator and we'll check this. Okay here we go. I've got the dial indicator hooked up. I'm going to turn this on and we're going to expect to see a zero run out at this 
point. Oops, I just bumped the camera. Try that again. Okay, here we go. Looks like we're getting the tiniest little movement. That's probably just dust or dirt. Let me put a rag on this surface. Clean that up a little bit. There we go. All right, so less than two thousandths of an inch. Right there. Okay, now we're going to um, shut off the, the lathe. And as I said, we're going to rotate the differential case in its cone cones. Um, half a turn. So I'm going to loosen this up right, right there, and uh, excuse the phone call. So I'm going to hang on to the center cone and the outer cone and turn the case half a turn right there, and then we'll tighten the nut uh, back up. We're going to do a rolling tight on this, not a uh, pound, pounding or impact uh, tight. And now let's watch the uh, run out again. Here it should be higher than it was uh, initially after machining. And yes it is. It looks like we have about three thousandths of an inch right there. And of course, that's with the arbor shaft moving up and down a thousandth uh, of an inch of that. So uh, we're less than that. We're probably two to one and a half thousandths of an inch by the time we get it back in the differential housing and centered with its um, side bearings. So let's uh, let's take that over and put it in and try it and see what we get. Okay, we are back to the workbench. And we've got our uh, differential case off of the brake lathe and set up being centered by the side bearings now. And I've got the dial indicator uh, all set up here. And um, I'm very pleased uh, with the results. The, um, the overall run out is just a little over one thousandth of an inch, not even uh, a complete uh, thousandth of an inch. And uh, I have to admit that's the first time I've ever uh, <laughs> machined a, a differential case on a uh, brake lathe. But let me show you. Um, we are on zero there. As we rotate it around, it goes up to one, just a little over one. Back to zero back up to one. So <clears throat> this is um, ready to put the ring gear back on. And of course I had to gut the differential uh, case. I had to pull all the uh, clutches and side gears and differential pinion uh, gears out of this case to be able to put the arbor shaft through the middle of it uh, there on the brake lathe. But it did work really well and uh, we were successful in repairing this uh, 1963 um, differential case. So we can now proceed uh, once I find some grade 8 1 inch long fine thread bolts to uh, put back uh, in the ring gear that preferably won't uh, stretch at 53 foot pounds. So this has been a uh, demonstration of uh, measuring the lateral run out on the um, differential case and the radial run out would be measured on this surface here but we've already done that in a previous video and it was um, 
around one thousandth of an inch also.